Almost all agarose gels are made between 0.8% and 2%. Agarose and 0.5x TAE or 0.5x TBE buffer are the two ingredients for making an agarose gel. For example, a 1% agarose gel is made by weighing out 1 gram of agarose and 100 milliliters of TAE or TBE buffer. The mixture is then heated to dissolve the agarose using a microwave. Swirling the mixture every minute or so helps to ensure a homogeneous solution and keep the liquid from boiling over. Heat until the agarose is completely dissolved into the buffer and the solution is clear. There are a number of ways to stain your DNA in order to visualize it on a UV box. If ETBR, ethidium bromide, is used, then approximately 4 microliters of a 10 mg per milliliter stock of ETBR is added to a 100 milliliter solution of agarose and TAE or TBE buffer. Remember, ETBR is a mutagen, so be careful not to spill any on yourself or the lab bench. In addition, place the used pipette tip in the correct waste container. If SYBR green is used, then a little less is required to visualize the DNA. Add the staining solution before you pour the gel and make sure it is mixed well within the agarose and the TAE or TBE buffer. Pour the liquid gel into the casting tray. The liquid should not be too hot when poured or it will crack the casting tray. However, it should not be so cool that the agarose and buffer start to solidify. The casting tray should be appropriately sealed with tape or rubber and a comb placed into grooves of the tray in order to load DNA. The size of the comb depends on the number of samples and the volume of DNA you are interested in loading. Let the gel solidify in a well-ventilated area. This takes 20 to 30 minutes depending on the size of the gel. I prefer to put the gel in a chemical fume hood. This way, inhaling the steam from the solution, if any, will be avoided. When the gel has solidified, remove the tape or rubber seal and the comb. Place it into an electrophoresis tank, which includes 0.5x TAE or 0.5x TBE buffer. There should be enough TAE or TBE buffer to cover the gel and make contact with the electrodes. Slowly load your DNA samples into the wells of the gel. Remember to add loading dye to each of your samples prior to pipetting them into the gel. The two most common loading dyes are bromophenol blue and orange G. Place the lid over the tank, making sure the electrodes go from black to red. That is, your negative electrode, black, is at the top of the tank, and your positive electrode, red, is at the bottom of the tank. Run your gel at 100 volts if it's a mini gel, and anywhere from 100 to 150 volts if it's a larger gel. There should be bubbles flowing at each end of the casting tray, more coming off the black electrode. If not, Check the connections to the power supply.